Hey everybody, this is I Command Noah here, better known as TV Boy, and I have another very special guest with me tonight. Three-time world champion and 2019 world's finalist, Daniel Taylor. Taylor. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel Taylor, also known as DT. DT, thank you so much for coming on to talk about this match with me. Yeah, it's great. So, um, we're looking at the semifinals match from Worlds uh, between you and Arvidas. Yep. So this we was have a pretty you... good match. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, you on the right playing Spectre Cell against Arvidos on the left with uh, VPT, Vader Palp Thrawn. And uh, what, what are, what's your thoughts on the uh, matchup here and the, and the map? Uh, I mean, this map's pretty interesting with the fluctuations, right? Because it's so big and mm -hmm. it is hard to tell, you know, what, uh, like, where you, where, where you need to go with your guys for the battle to make sense. Uh, and I was I was really worried in this game about like if I get too split up, Invader can kind of run in and kill somebody, and uh, get away without any kind of penalties. Then I would really be in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And do you have a preference for which side of the map you like to commit to, especially for fluctuations? Uh. I mean, it looks like I picked this side. Yeah, I have initiative, so I picked that side. Uh, I don't. It feels pretty similar for the most part. Uh, just the side I'm on has like the extra little square of wall in your hallway, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to like commit as much uh, if you want to hang out at the top of your hallway. Yeah, and you and I actually played on this exact uh, mission in the Swiss mounds, and you also went towards the red and yellow in that mi in that uh, round as well. Uh, so. Yeah, we were doing a Spectre Mirror, right? Yeah. Yep. And it f kind of feels like VPT and Spectre are, are pretty evenly matched up as far as, like, list composition goes, because you kind of have, you know, VPT kind of has its, its ranged attacker, then its melee force user attacker, and then kind of middle ground support, kind of like Spectra Cell does. Yeah, they do play somewhat similarly uh, in that you want to jump in at the right time and kill everything. Uh, mm -hmm. And like your your ranged attacker is a little more fragile. Uh, Thrawn obviously much more fragile than Sabine. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. But kind of similar approaches as far as your range um, for where you want to engage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ne neither can, like, shoot super far, right? And that's yeah. that's going to kind of come into play in this game uh, as we vie over the, uh, the area there that we're moving towards. Yep. And uh, VPT just a little bit more concentrated uh, in its figures, like, as far as its attack power, more concentrated into a smaller number of figures versus Spectre Cell. Um, right. If you lose any of those three figures, it starts feeling really bad mm -hmm. uh, as the Vader player. Whereas if Spectre Cell, you know, you can lose like a guy or even two, and you're still still like almost full power sometimes. Right. So it looks like you passed on the first activation since you have initiative, and then Arvados activated his officer to move Vader forward. Uh, again, towards the red and yellow, and it looks like you moved Hera towards the red and yellow. Yeah, I th so where Hera, where I put Hera there, I, I almost immediately regretted that. Uh, I kind of wanted her one space back, because mm. uh, where she's at now, uh, he can kind of like run up with Vader and just force choke her pretty easily after it, after Ezra's going to get out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, like, Thrawn can kind of just move forward and, like, maybe take a pot shot at her from pretty far. Uh, yeah. Which is not, which is not great. Uh, but, I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad, but. Yeah, and Thrawn can have surprisingly good range, even though he doesn't have any surge for range. Yeah, I mean, he's got, like, min five, right? But. Yeah. You're likely to get, like, six or seven. Mm-hmm. Without, you know, that's not too unreasonable. Uh, 
But if you want to shoot like eight or more, it starts getting a little dicey, I think. Yeah. And you don't have, uh, you're running doubt in your list, right? That's correct. So you don't have motivation to kind of cor course correct with those little s small movements. You just yeah. have chopper. Yeah, so I, I basically use chopper as motivation in this game. It's going to come off later. Uh, and it, it's pretty funny, actually, I think. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, doubt, doubt is... Uh, I, I felt like I got a lot of value out of doubt throughout the tournament. Uh, okay. Quite a few like rerolls into missed shots, or yes, uh, just you know, remove a few tokens here and there. Yeah. Did you remove a lot of focuses with it during the tournament? Uh, you know, I had eight, eight of my ten games were Specter Mirror matches, so no. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> uh, it did remove one key focus in my game against. Uh, who did I play? Who did I play that was also not running Spectre? Uh, somebody had like Han. Oh, it was uh, Ryan. I think it was Ryan Striplin. He was playing Han Drock Sabine. Oh, okay. And uh, in round one, I positioned such that like he couldn't get a Han shot at the very end unless he mm. he moved eight or you know more than four. So yeah. he moved more than four to get an end round shot. But I had initiative, so I got to remove mm. his focus before the end round shot. Yeah, I bet he was not happy to see that you had doubt in your list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, okay, so we had, it looks like we had the other officer moving, I think, Thrawn forward? Because Vader was there. At the yeah, beginning. he moved Thrawn up. Th this is where I like actually really started regretting moving Hera up. Because now he can, like, if he moved forward, I'll commit completely. Yeah. I'm almost certainly going to take some damage. But it would be... Not it would be difficult for him to do that without exposing Thrawn as well. Right. So that that is, but like he has, like I'm gonna get he's gonna get initiative in round two. Yeah. Uh, and so if he can engineer that to happen near the end uh, of the round, where I can't punish him too bad. But like with Spectre, it's it's really hard, right? Because like they can always just have speed nearby to get shot off. Uh, yeah. It looks like, I mean, a lot of, like you said, Thrawn is is pretty fragile. So for him to push Thrawn out, you know. Yeah, it's really it, risky. Yeah. For sure. Okay, so so it looks like we've had, and then you moved, um, you moved Ezra over to the green fluctuation, right? Yeah, I wasn't really sure what to do with him. I mean, I didn't want to, like, go in with him because... Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, it's way too far away. And I didn't want to, like, run up to, like, the red fluctuation to try to get a damage token. Because, like, uh, Vader might be able to get to me and kill me, right? Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm like, whatever, I'll throw him on the green one and get a block. And, like, his abilities, like, move four at the start of the round. So, like, the blue the blue difficult terrain doesn't matter mm -hmm. right, for that. Uh, so then yeah. I figure out I'd be able to get close enough to maybe actually do something. Yeah, and the the matchup always kind of feels like you know who whoever overextends first is usually going to be in trouble. So, um, it feels like a good move there to kind of just get into position instead of pushing forward too aggressively. Right, right. I mean, especially you know with initiative going to him, I'm a little worried yeah. about. Okay, so we got a long range shot from Sabine to the Death Trooper. Yeah. And I think you got Yes, yeah, so this is eight an eight range shot, which was pretty I mean I've got Hera, so it's not like completely unreasonable, right? Right. Uh but I actually got like eight you got on the dice. Natural least, range. Yeah. So I felt pretty good about that. Uh and I think I went ahead and used Hera here. Uh, just to get some extra more damage, because I wasn't sure if I'd be able to use her later or not. Right, because you you could have saved her for the second Spectre Cell attack, but the range yeah, eight but shots... I was gonna go ahead. I have like one moving point left with Sabine, so I was gonna move back just to kind of get away. And so I was I like I wasn't convinced I could make range again. Uh, anyways, oh I th oh yeah, so I played positioning advantage here. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Because I think with position advantage and Hera, he would have to uh, discard a card to save the guy. So I was like, well, I'll make him discard a card. Yeah. Uh, so I went ahead and did that. Yeah, and I think you were one of the few people playing positioning advantage in your deck. Yeah, I actually was not playing Rebel Graffiti, oh. uh, which a lot of people really like to play that card. But uh, yes, uh, I, I positioning advantage definitely helped me out in in quite a few games. Because uh, I I'd much rather like kill a guy than have him live with one health, but like I get two points, right? Yeah, that makes sense, and that's kind of like. <clears throat> what I found with my Spectre games is just, like, the more damage and figures you can remove from the board, the better. Exactly. And you don't really want to futz around with things like Celebration, so... So yeah, I, can't, I, that... I can't tell what he discarded there. Uh, it's Force Rush. Force Rush, yeah. And so I think, like, making him discard that actually is going to hurt him a little later mm. when he actually wants to, like, try to decide what to do with Vader. Yeah, just because it's such a huge map, and you kind of pull him around in different directions later in the mid game. Right. So, not having that mobility does cost him later. Yeah, I'm curious what other stuff he had in his hand, but uh, I mean, I'm obviously most worried about like the parting blow and the parting blow combo kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like he's going with Thrawn now. So yeah, he hit my tough luck. Yeah, so that was kind of a big hit because that's kind of the card that enables doubt. Yeah, right? I mean, I was like, dang it! it. Like, I've got, I've got this in here because I have doubt. Right. But, uh, I mean, doubt can still do stuff, though, which I, I think I get good value out of doubt this game. Because you uh, will have a lot of power tokens to remove, at least. Uh, well, I, he, yeah, I mean, he's at least got some power tokens, but I think I might even use doubt in this first round. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Because uh, he's moving Thrawn up to shoot Sabine here. <clears throat> and so he moved Thrawn the full four spaces, or maybe only three spaces here. Maybe only three spaces. This is a range eight shot. So it's still. range eight, which, again, remember we said he, range eight's not great. It so looks like yeah, he did make it. He made the range here, and I made him reroll the green die. Because the green die has a three only on one side. Right. So any other side of that green die is a miss. So, uh, that's why I made it reroll the, yep. the green die. And there's the one. So, yep. The, yep. And, and that, I think this kind of starts, begins a trend for yeah. <laughs> Arvidas in this game, um, for his range shots, at least, going forward. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he moved Thrawn back one. And so now it's like a nine range shot for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't remember if I moved Sabine forward to shoot or back or left her where she was. Mm -hmm. I think I took the nine. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. So, how big of a deal are these power tokens from these fluctuations for you? Like, are um, you willing to be out of position to get a power token? No, because they're in like super risky places. For, I mean, like yeah. the one in Ezra's one is pretty safe for yeah. the most part. But, like, the rest of them are in super risky or un inconvenient locations. Yeah, like, like the... The, I was the say, yellow the ones are ones. the easiest to get. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the blue ones you can get, but you're out of the fight completely, right? Yep. Uh, but, like, the yellow ones are, like, kind of in the middle of the fight. And, like, the red ones are pretty close to the fight, but it's super dangerous to go up there. Yeah. Because you're close and you're super exposed to line of sight. Exactly. Exactly. And, like, the red ones, they don't look that dangerous uh, for some reason to me, but the line of sight you can draw up into that area is very deceptive. Uh, yeah, you can generally shoot... Like, the the one on his side, if I was able to get a guy there, is, like, kind of safe. Uh, but then, like, Vader can just, like, move eight, and then the Emperor can move six and, like, get a hit on a guy, right? Yeah. Or, like, if Vader has, like, urgency, then I'm taking a Vader hit. Yeah. Uh, and yep. it's just not worth it. Yep. So it looks like Sabine took a shot with Spectre Cell and and missed, um, and then moved back behind Hera. Yeah, I was gonna just play that safe because like I don't want Sabine to die, uh, to like pointless, you know, Thrawn, like a palp shot from Thrawn or something, right? Mm -hmm. uh, or like Vader running up. Uh, 
And so then I didn't really know what to do with Kanan, so I was like, oh, I'll just kind of throw him out here near Ezra. Like, they kind of need to be together, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting that you kind of just, Kanan just ended up following Ezra, but he is... Yeah, because, like, uh, I mean, I could have put him, like, at the top, or I guess at the the very bottom in this in this orientation near the red thing, mm -hmm. but like I don't want to get shot by Thrawn, like I don't want to get smoked by Vader, so it's just mm -hmm. it's just not worth it. Uh, see, he tempted Hera here, which I thought uh, again this made me start regretting. Like, dang it, he's gonna come force choke Terra, and mm -hmm. then I'm gonna really regret, you know, having Hera out there. But I th I don't think he actually did that. Uh, I don't remember what he does. I guess we'll see in a moment. But yeah, so he went with Palp and didn't get a shot with anybody. Yeah, um, it's interesting to force choke or for, to attempt on Hera because she actually can hit pretty hard. Yeah, I mean Hera's gun is is not bad, right? Uh, yeah. Though she's kind of crappy range too for the most part. Yeah. Um, That's true. But uh. Yeah, and he but put eventually... Palp pretty far out here. So then I was like, well, can he, like, lightning my guys? But, <laughs> like, he's not really going to be able to lightning Ezra or Kanan where they're standing. Right. So he really wanted to be, like, one space closer, maybe. But then, you know, with Spectre Cell, you always got to worry about, like, oh, they're just going to run up and kill everybody. <laughs> right. It's kind of like you guys end up getting into this kind of shootout game of chicken where... You don't want to be the person who steps forward first because then the other guy's gonna kill you. So then you kind of just have to wait for the other guy to do it, and you're slowly inching towards each other. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So here's here's where I went with Chopper, and he's doing the job of motivation. So I moved <laughs> I moved Hera away because I just really didn't want Hera to get force choked. Because <laughs> like force choke on Vader's activation, and force choke at end around, you know, then she's like already getting close to being dead. Yeah, yeah. so getting her out of danger. And then I like this play with Zeb that you made where you didn't go, you didn't bother with that fluctuation like we were talking about. You know, it's just one point. You went to that, you went slightly in towards the Spire, and that sets you up for next turn going after that Death Trooper. Right. I figure if he's there, he can threaten the Death Trooper, and he can also threaten, like, coming up to hit, like, Palp or, or Thrawn and, even. And now he's exactly eight spaces away from that death trooper space so if you do manage to kill him you can take that spot next turn yeah which yeah. i thought was really good yeah i was mostly thinking about like i mean yeah like I'm the death trooper but i don't really care too much about the death trooper i, I mostly just want him to be in a spot where he can go try to help against palp or, or vader if vader comes up so you just have uh, a lot of options yeah yeah and so i've actually like i've kind of spread out quite a bit here uh -huh. uh, which I was a little worried about, but he wasn't willing to commit anything either, really. So you can see he just moved Vader to stand on the, the doodad. Mm -hmm. uh, which I I guess he didn't really have a better play. Because uh, I don't know that he could have force choked anybody. Yeah, from I think where because you moved Hera back. Yeah. Um, All right, so so if, he had, if he had just gone with Vader earlier and force choked Hera, that would have been good, I think. Good for uh, and I and I couldn't have really done anything super bad to him for for doing that. Yeah. Uh, and and like Vader here is just not in a great spot to do anything in round two. I feel like uh, kind of by himself. He's kind of far away from everybody. Yeah, like I think he would have been much happier if he had moved him up near Thrawn and force choked Hera while she was still there. Because um, you yeah. had, let's see, did you do Chopper before Zeb? Uh, yes, I did. But you did it after the Spectre Cell attack. I'm wondering if maybe he just didn't want to give you a shot on Vader with, with Sabine. I guess, but like, Sabine's not going to do that much damage. And like, it's super risky that I'm going to even hit her, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, then he moved he moved Vader backwards a little bit here, which I thought was interesting. I guess he was just really scared of me doing take initiative or something. Yeah, because uh, Ezra could brash up and then move forward and attack him, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and those Jedi will do work on Vader. I mean, they can do tons of damage. It's crazy. 
So he's probably giving Kanan and Ezra their space. But kind of give, keeping Vader out of the fight as a result. But we were talking with Steve and Arvidas is so patient with Vader. Um, I think that's kind of his style is to kind of hold Vader back until there's an opportunity to go in and be safe. Right. I mean, that's kind of what you have to do against Spectre Cell. Right. So it, it totally makes sense what he's going for here. He's, uh, pro he's probably trying to wait for a chance to isolate one of your guys to take him out safely because... Otherwise, Vader Vader can kill one Spectre easily, but then he just dies, right? Right. So you that's, need to, that's what you yeah. really need not to happen for sure. Right. So probably being cautious. Uh, for so I think reason. right now I'm probably trying to decide where to put Ezra. Is what's going on? Uh, yeah. Well, we saw Fleet Footed played. Uh. I don't Not know sure what, that, what was. That, that. I think that was a force choke. Oh, he was force choked Kanan. Oh, that's what I, it was. And I discarded yeah. for the strain. That's what that was. Yeah. Yeah. So then I moved Ezra here, and uh, I was pretty happy about this spot because I think in my hand I'm holding uh, Heart of Freedom. Mm. So, you know, I feel like Ezra can get pretty much anywhere I need to get at this point, and he really will have to commit uh, to come attack him. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say I might have even had on the lamb in my hand at this point, uh, which really, you know, I would love to have Vader come try to attack me in that mm -hmm. case. Um, yeah, and then he would be facing a counterattack from Kanan and Zeb. And, and Ezra, right. Like, that, that would be really bad for him if he went in for that. Uh, but yeah, so he has to go first. And I think he went with the Death Trooper here? Because the Death Trooper is like one health left, right? The elite one that's between Palpatine. and That's Ron. right. Yeah. Uh, so and it definitely makes sense to go with that guy. Um, but I don't know what he does with it. I think he might go attack Kanan or something because that's probably about all you can do at this point. That's right. Yeah, he does go for that. There he goes. So moves into the middle area to attack Kanan. But uh, I don't remember. and he got he got some damage here, I think too. Yeah, and he has the range. Yeah. but you high roll, so oh, zero right. damage. Yeah, I, got, I got the four blocks. Yep. Good old rerolls on Kanan. Yeah, so that was that was definitely a feels bad man moment for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and that, like I said, kind of a trend that starts with his attacks. <laughs> yeah, I mean he really he really deserved at least like one or two damage there. I think, but. <laughs> He didn't get any, unfortunately, for him. So he moves him back. So at least he's kind of tucked away there where you would have to kind of commit some somebody up forward to get to him. Yeah, but I mean, with one health, like, you know, Sabine can just kind of arbitrarily kill that guy. And she can do her thing where she wraps around a wall with the grenade. Like, she doesn't need line of sight to him. Yeah, and like, I don't really need to kill him this round. Because, mm -hmm. like... There's a lot more important things going on right. than me killing that guy that's already gone. Yeah, I, I when I was watching, I remember thinking it felt almost like a bait. Like he was trying to use this dead trooper to kind of bait you into coming towards his other guys. Yeah, but there's like there's no way I'm going to go kill that guy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I certainly thought about it. Because, I mean, again, I've got on the lamb with Ezra. But, like, it's just not worth it. Like, Because then I'm going to get lightning right, and shot by Thrawn... Like, mm -hmm. it's just bad times. Right. So, let's see. Now, who, the question is, who do you activate? Uh, I think I thought about this one for a pretty long time. Uh, uh, yeah, looking at it now, I mean, like, Chopper to move somebody? Oh, I think I, okay, I just went with Sabine, though. It looks like you're looking at another long range shot with Hera as backup. Yeah, I mean seven range with Hera sitting there, like that's pretty that's pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. I mean definitely oh, worth going for it. Oh, and I got tools as well. So it's a so. it's a it's a guarantee then because I think you added a green. Yeah, I added green because I'm, 
Um, I'm always scared about rolling the worst dice. <laughs> yeah, I've missed with Sabine so many. I mean, against you in the game I played against you, I kept getting four on like range five shots. So <laughs> yeah, kept biting me. So the green I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, I think uh, we got like one we of the can't dice. quite see all the dice here, but uh... yeah, we'll see what the how much damage he takes though. Yeah, I mean, oh. I think he already had. No, he didn't have any on him. He, I think he, he takes like take four. Any. He takes like four or five here, actually, because mm -hmm. I think I got the range with all the dice and was able to add more damage with Hera potentially. Uh, and I don't think he uses. Uh... Oh yeah, here. So here, you know, he we we decided, you know, no mods or anything. And then he's like, oh, it's this much damage. And I'm like, I think I searched for Pierce 2 here. Because, like, if he uses Zillow, then, like, my other guys are way more threatening. Yeah. Uh, and so I think I searched for Pierce 2, and he let it go. Yeah, I don't. he didn't use Zillow here, which was he did not. Yeah, he did not use Zillow. Uh, which, like, I can understand that, right? Because, like, you got to worry about, like, Ezra just, like, insta-killing the Emperor, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, uh, and that, like, and using Zillow there would just leave Thrawn at five, which is kind of kill kill range anyway, right? Uh, he, Thrawn would have been at four if he tapped Zillow, which oh, yeah. would feel a little bit better, I think. Well, he'd be uh, at five health left. I mean, uh, yes, he, you're. Fine. He took six from that, so yeah, he took six damage there, which that that feels pretty bad. Uh. Because now anyone can kill him with a single shot. Yeah, now he's definitely killable. But I feel like 5 health is kind of like one shot range for Spectre. Like, I feel a, I feel like a Spectre can be reliable uh, yeah. to 5. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly... I mean, they do tons of damage, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah, so oh, now he yeah. has to go with Ron. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, you know... I could just use Spectre Cell and kill him with Sabine. And it looks like he... So he's got a Surge on Thrawn. And he mills... Let's see what he takes here. He's discarding my card. Oh, your Strength in numbers, numbers goes now. So he's been doing, getting some good cards. Really could have used that right now. Because <laughs> that would have that let me kill him. So he makes another pretty long range shot for Thrawn. Yeah, his seven range, and I, I want to say, oh, I got, I got the dodge on this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that so, was that was pretty dumb. Uh, so I think so far he's like, I mean, he still four. wouldn't have a great way to kill Sabine, no. even if he did get that damage in there, right? Because uh, I made him miss the last attack. So, right. uh, so he's fallen pretty far behind on the damage race here, though. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so here's the Zeb activation. And you do go for that regular yeah, so, Death Trooper. Yeah, so I mean, I wasn't really sure what to do. Like, he doesn't want to commit. So, like, whatever. I'll go have Zeb go punch this guy in the face. And I, I didn't expect to kill him, but oh my goodness. I rolled he, so well. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's a long shot, but I thought you had planned that out from the turn before, because... You put him there perfectly to take that spot. I mean, cer certainly he was in range to do that, but I, I mean, I didn't expect to kill that guy. Uh, so that was that was super nice on my end. Uh, I mean, that guy wasn't super threatening, right? Like, he's not going to do a ton of damage to me, but he, he'll be no. annoying, and it's just another activation that uh, that he goes down by. So yeah, there's just one less thing to worry about, and... Um, one more point of control that you've now taken on the map, where now you have his terminal, you have that extra victory point. Yep, yep, yep. So let's see. So now we've got Vader, Palpatine, um, and the officers. So he's prob. What I'm thinking he's probably going to do is uh, body block for Thrawn with the officers, and probably just try to move him back into safety. Because that seems to be what he likes to do with with those officers. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he moved Thrawn anymore. Uh, 
Yeah, so right now I'm probably trying to think about, like, how can I get that last shot I need on Thrawn <laughs> without, like, sacrificing any of my guys? Uh, he's probably trying to think about how in the world he gets Vader to get some action. Uh, yeah, because... And he must he... not have any good movement cards because mm -hmm. he could pretty safely go hit Zeb right now if he had something. Because, like, if Vader's down there, like... He really only has to worry about like an Ezra and a Spectre or Zeb attack. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas if he goes if he goes like towards anybody else, he kind of has to worry about the rest of the squad. Uh, and so it looks like he's playing it safe with Palpatine, moving mm -hmm. him back. Um, but like that kind of just puts Palp a little more out of the fight. Like he's not going to be able to make any big plays from there. Unless I come further towards him, right? Uh, so, now this scenario does let him uh, kind of do that because there's not there's not a ton of points sitting on the board uh, that you can easily get, right? So I'm not gonna like jump ahead a ton in objective points. Yeah, that's the thing about fluctuations is like the, they're only one point each, so it's like where is the fight? That's kind of always the thing to hard thing to figure out on fluctuations. Exactly. It's like the fight is wherever their figures are, but you don't really want to go to where Spectre figures are because that's where Death is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like <laughs> this is where it really it really stinks for him to only have Thrawn really as the ranged attacker. Mm-hmm. Because uh, because Thrawn is so fragile, you just really can't afford anything to happen here. Yeah, so I, I guess it looks like I'm going in with Hera because I just I didn't want to commit to anything. Uh, so I figure out I might as well just take a long shot at Palp. Uh, and I wanted to... looks like I just went as far as I could go because, you know, otherwise I'd probably miss. Is it not so worth it to shoot at the officer there? Like, I don't really care about the officer, right? Like... The officer doesn't really do too much, and like he probably just dodge. Yeah. Whereas if I can get some damage on Palp, then that might be worth it. Yeah, that makes sense. And then by doing this, you're also pushing Hera's sphere of influence forward, so Sabine could move forward and take a a closer range shot as well if she wanted right. to. Right. Right. So Sabine could get a better shot later, and I, I rolled really well in the range here. So. Yeah, you got like nine accuracy here. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a range seven. I mean, eight? seven seven is pretty risky with Hera. Uh, that's a eight. That's a range eight shot. No, it's only seven. Oh, it is only seven. Okay, but still. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, still seven's like super risky with Hera. Uh, but I, I just, I wasn't convinced I could do anything else that was worth doing. Uh, yeah, and you're still way outside of his uh, threat range for for his figures. Yeah, I mean he can he can line in Hera from here, but he has to like fully commit with Emperor, mm -hmm. uh, which like obviously he doesn't want to do that. Yeah, this is, just seems like a really tough map for Arvidas to kind of navigate with this type of list. Yeah, I th I think he probably really needed to just go, like he really probably should have just gone and tried to kill Zeb down there, mm. and and not worry about the rest of the guys. Um. But instead, he kind of is moving the opposite direction. Uh, I see. Because if he hadn't done that with the officer... Like, I mean, he could have moved uh, Palp further down that way. Or I don't know that he could have got to Vader to order him. I don't remember exactly where that officer was. But uh, is, yeah. if, if he still had that force rush in his hand, he would have a lot more options, right? Yeah, he's probably really, really regretting that. But then it's like whoever he sends Vader after, after that guy's dead, then Vader's just kind of stuck out of position. That that's true. So he would have to like get everyone else to safety in order to commit to such a move. Because as soon as you have Vader rush off to fight somebody, the rest of your Spectres are gonna rush in in his absence, right? Like that's your yeah. that's your cue to kind of move in. Yep, yep, yep. Vader's kind of the goalie if you will. So, other officers moving up. 
and he commands the death trooper back to the fluctuation which yeah kinda... I wasn't really sure what he was trying to accomplish with that move I mean he kind of blocks a little bit uh... um, and he got he got that guy out of like easy kill range for Ezra like Ezra could have just ran up and killed that guy but uh, now I don't have any great plays yeah, but if and if Ezra had done that, like Vader could just move in and chop Ezra's head off. That's true. So uh, that kind of I feel like he kind of like let the bait go, but then put it in a place where it was easier for like Sabine to kill him. Yeah, I mean, so here here I'm moving Chopper as my my motivator <laughs> uh, uh, to just kind of push people around. Yeah, it's funny to see Chopper so far away from the terminal too, but. Yeah, I mean, I just totally, totally gave up on my terminal in this game. <laughs> There's no reason for him to be there if Arvados isn't going to be at his terminal. Right. Um, so let's see, you still have Kanan and Ezra. You haven't gone with Sabine yet, I don't think, either. Yeah, I think he just has Palp and Vader, maybe, Yeah. at this point. Because he lost an activation. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what he did actually, but I think Palpatine does lightning. Um, do you think he should be tempting Hera still with Palpatine? Uh, yeah, because she's already got one on her, so if you can get, like, Force Lightning and Choke will kill her, basically, right? Yeah. At this point, if you tempt, tempt Force Lightning and Choke. Right. Uh, but that does, that does definitely commit Palpatine to go do that. Uh, but he does have a movement card here, which is, is what he uses to get out there and Lightning her. Uh, so that takes her to five, and, um, lets him kind of put Palpatine in a somewhat safe spot. Oh, then he's trying to kill... I guess he was trying to kill Hera with that Death Trooper, but, uh... Unfortunately for him, I got his blocks. <laughs> and he ne he needed one accuracy. Because it was right. a range 5 attack, so... He, I mean, he, could he, surge, he could surge for it, but, uh... Oh, well, that's I mean, right. But damage surge is not going to cut it for him. Yeah, he needed the surge for the, the damage, I think. So... Yeah. So, yeah, I missed... Another missed attack, um... So now, like you said, Vader can kill Hera with just a force choke. So do you right. move so somebody it's, up? I think it's my turn now, and I've got Ezra and Kanan. And uh, I'm just counting the spaces that Ezra can move. And I'm like, well, if I play Heart of Freedom, I can move all the way up to get like two spaces away from Thrawn. Oh, yeah, I love so, this move. Yeah, this is awesome. Just So I, I was like, eh, might as well go back here, you know? Because then I can Spectre Cell to kill Thrawn. Right. And it's pretty much guaranteed. Uh, I, I was miscounting a little bit. I thought I thought Kanan could get over there to buff him. But it's it's like one square short for Kanan to do that. Right. And uh, and Ezra's pretty safe there. He's kind of like... There's no one else. Oh yeah, there's no way he's killing him with Vader. Unless he's got like tons of cards. But yeah. he's already played you know lost a couple movement cards so but there was no kind of thought of trying to move somebody to block line of sight to Hera uh I mean Kanan could have done that I suppose but then I wouldn't be able to Spectre to kill Thrawn right oh because oh, you had gone with Sabine already yeah I'd already, I think I only have Kanan left oh he okay has Vader left at this point yeah that makes sense so... I think you definitely want, would trade Hera for Thrawn yeah, like I, I don't know, like Hera should already kind of be dead. So yeah, <laughs> any any longer that she lives is just a bonus. I think Vader would have to do a full four movement to get to the green fluctuation. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would think that would be where he would want to go. Is just move the four to that green thing and kill Hera. I don't know if that's what happens or not. I would expect that to be what happens. Yeah. Looks like it. Yep. 
So there's there goes Hera. Yeah. Yep, so there goes Hera. Um, so Arvidas is writing all his cards, but you still have Kane I think I, to go. Yeah, I think I did heroic effort there. Um, and so then I still have to go with Kane in. Uh, and this is where I'm like, man, I, I didn't count that right. But not, not much else I really could have done about that. Mm, I see. Yeah, you're I like really one space give away. One more space. But uh, it's fine because Cannon can just go sit on the uh, the yellow doodad. Uh, but I probably should have put him on the red doodad because if he sits on the yellow one, Vader can come attack him. With which is like, why? Why am I? Yeah, why am I gonna put him there? But uh, instead, I sit him on the yellow one, which that was that was pretty dumb. <laughs> uh, well, probably felt like it was but... time to be aggressive. And just miscounted. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so there, there's Ezra just kind of smoking Thrawn. Like it looks like you got like two di two surges on two dice, and you still smoked him. I mean, he only had three health left, right? Yep. So like not hard at uh, all. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh... Yep, and then of course Ezra can just move out of there and get into the fight with. Brad. Yeah, so now I'm really threatening to kill the Emperor at the start of the next turn. Uh, because if I have some movement cards and Ezra can get closer, right? Um, so I think that's what I wanted to do. But, yeah, uh, and it's, so it's impressive how you were able to sync that all up so that everyone's now kind of... The net is kind of collapsing in on... Arvidas's cluster there all at the same time even though it's coming from different directions and you're kind of doing yeah, he, different Yeah, he's things. actually like completely surrounded here. Uh, so yeah, there goes his Vader attack. I, yeah, I really should have put him on that red thing. Uh, so he's got four. Back. He's doing a reroll. But he got a good hit there. So seven. Yeah, he got, he got some good damage there. Seven uh, against three, so four on Kanan. Yep. Yeah, because that little two dice attack can kind of whiff sometimes, especially against yeah, Spectre. yeah. But he uh, max rolled. So I think I get initiative. I think the question then, is. Uh, I don't know that he had. Yeah, so there's my Ezra move. So using the move X spaces there to go through a guy, yep. uh, which was pretty nice. Oh. But then uh, I negated his take. Yep, yeah, the negation. So you knew you were going to have initiative this round. Yep. Unless, did you draw it for your turn, or? I I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. I mean, I've uh, I've had a decent amount of cards. Right, this is round three, and we got two each round. Well, I got two each round, so mm. five, seven, and then I heroic efforted one. So I've I've seen at least eight cards. Yeah. I think. Oh, he's also discarded a few with. Uh, Thrawn. Yep. So I've actually gone through quite a bit of my deck at this point. Yep, Vader Pelt Thrawn is able to do that surprisingly quickly with Thrawn and the Force Chokes. Yeah, I mean, especially if you get like Force C and Force Chokes, uh, you can really go through a lot of your deck. So you're going Kanan uh, here, likely because yeah. you have Vader on top of you. Yeah, I mean, Kanan, going, going with Kanan at the top of round is pretty good because it usually makes them make a a tough decision sometimes. Yep. Here it was a pretty easy decision because, like, I'm going to go kill Palp, so he just says Palp. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he didn't have Parting Blow, I guess. Or, or like, he didn't want to use it if he did. Uh, so he's only running so... one copy in his deck, we found out. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I, I'm pretty sure I thought he had Unshakable the whole game, too. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, it turns out he didn't. He's got, like, two uh, cards in his command deck that can remove... Uh, condition so he kind of okay. relies on that i see i see so you could get that extra but yeah so kanan had to go clean up that death trooper couldn't really do too much else but then uh specter cell with ezra on the emperor i was hoping to do quite a bit of damage here um 
don't remember how much I ended up getting. Oh, because I, yeah, I was playing Death Blow, even though just for the one damage to try to hopefully kill him. But he's got eight left, so not super likely to kill him. So did you feel there was a real need to get rid of that Death Trooper? Because it feels bad to use a Kanan attack to do one damage. Um, I mean, I could have attacked Vader, I guess. But at this point, I pretty much thought I'm not killing Vader. I see. Didn't want to waste right. it. Yeah, so like, I'd rather kill a guy I'm pretty sure I'm going to kill than not kill anybody. Yeah, because all the damage you put into Vader if you're not killing him is just wasted, right? So. Yeah, yeah. There's no half points in this game. See, I got pretty decent damage here. Uh, looks like I got a lot of looks like, like five, got five damage showing. Yeah. And then the death blow inspector. So it looks like you got nine total. Nine pierce three. Yeah, so like that's pretty darn good. So uh, nine pierce one. So he had to use uh he had to discard a card there, I think, to not die. Oh yeah. Uh but he just discarded for C, which yeah, didn't need that. Right. Oh, he lived with two health, I guess, it looks like. Uh yeah, I was going based on the the damage tokens on the card, so I'm pretty sure he had two left. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I moved one away with Spectre Cell because I didn't want uh, I didn't want him to attack me and light me light with me. Palp. Yeah, uh, and the nice because if he had had just one health left, you wouldn't have to worry about the lightning. But because right. he's got two, he can lightning you. Right. Yep. Uh, so he tempts Kanan because he figures Kanan probably can't attack anymore. And uh, he'll kill him with Vader. Mm -hmm. Which makes makes total sense. Yep, so now just the question of does he bother with light... Because he could lightning Kanan, but Vader can probably deal the rest of the damage to Kanan to kill him. Yeah, you're, you're like pretty sure Vader can kill Kanan at this point with at least an attack and end of round attack or end of round choke right yeah or even just a single attack from vader can do eight to nine against kanan yeah i mean you're not experience. super likely for that to happen but certainly possible <laughs> but yeah he just goes for the lightning on ezra which is pretty smart yeah uh, makes ezra a little less threatening for later uh, he tr tries to hit me with the uh I mean, he should use the officer to shoot Kanan, is what he did there. But uh, I got four blocks. Yeah, that. Uh... Yeah, that was a lot of a lot of good blocks for me this game <laughs> on that black die. I mean, the officer you don't really expect to do damage to. Although I've heard yeah. stories about people saying they've done like two da two or three damage to Ezra with an officer. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't happen in my games. <laughs> yeah. So he doesn't move him away. You couldn't have attacked there, I guess, because, again, you did move away, so might as well just move him further back. Kind of makes it harder for... Yeah, what, what's interesting is he actually put him in range Zeb here. Oh. Uh, which, uh, I was thinking about that, but I, I also... It looks like I'm going with Sabine. Oh, because I still have one the Lamb, right? Oh, so, yeah. So, like, I'm, I'm not worried about Ezra dying anytime soon. Uh, so I just go with Sabine. And I shot Vader uh, just to see, like, is it possible for me to kill Vader this game? Uh, but he got Mega Blocks on his dice. Looks there. like six with the power token. Yeah, so I think I only did, like, one or something. Uh, it looks like he's discarding for Zillow. Uh, he probably used the... Uh, oh, he probably exhausted it. Exhausted it to get rid of the Pierce 2. So actually, done... zero damage. Yeah, you did zero. zero. Yeah, I did zero there. So, I grenade him for two, though. Uh, but yeah, I was like, man, well, probably probably not killing, not killing Vader this game. So I didn't know where to put Sabine, because like, I don't want Sabine to die. Uh, so I kind of put her out kind of middle of nowhere, effectively. Uh, she'll still be able to, you know, get some attacks in, or, you know, depending on what he does. But he, he still pretty much has to commit Vader. Yep. If he wants if he wants to kill anybody except Kanan. But I mean Kanan's the obvious choice to go kill. 
Yeah, and that uh, those misses on the ranged attacks in the early game are kind of really catching up here and showing how far behind he is on the damage race. That's right. He could have had some damage on Sabine, but he had the one miss attack and the one dodge. Yeah. Uh, so Sabine is full health. Um, and it's funny because you, you're you saying that, you know, don't really want to bother with Vader, but you're kind of running out of targets here. <laughs> you have an, <laughs> That's certainly true. You have an overabundance of attackers. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so here here it looks like he realized that uh, Zeb could go kill the Emperor pretty easily. So he moved uh, moved the Emperor back with the officer. Um, but you probably wanted to get Sabine out of there anyway, right? Yeah, I, I just really didn't want him to just move forward and like kill Sabine with two attacks with Parting Blow or something like that. That was what I was the most worried about there. Because Sabine can dance around Vader pretty well, but if he kills Sabine... Um, Kanan's kind of still doomed, right? Yeah, and like I've got initiative, right? Yeah. So like, if he killed Sabine there, and then next round he killed Kanan, like then it started to look really bad for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, Ezra, I had Force Rush because I play. I've got like five movement cards in this deck. Yep. So I can pretty much get anywhere. Um, so I go finish off uh, the Emperor here. Uh, Yep, and and I don't think I was able to get recover. Uh, it looks like you got three surges there. One, two, three. Four. Yeah, maybe. Oh, but maybe you were I weakened. That's yeah, I was weakened, so I had to. Uh, let's see. I don't know. No, two, but we three, took the damage four, off. So five, six. Yeah, I I wonder if I could have recovered here. Oh no, I did recover. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I went to one out of ten. So I mean that was pretty good. I was I was feeling pretty good at this point because uh, it's basically Vader versus the world, right? Yep, and you're starting to kind of spread out again, make it diff make force Vader to make tough choices about where he needs to go. Yeah, I mean I think we had like you know twenty minutes left or something. Not not too much time left. Okay, so here Arvados uh, plays Dying Lunge. Oh yeah, he wanted to play Dying Launch with Palpatine, which you allowed. Like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Of I mean, course. Like, and the interesting thing him. is, because it's Ezra's activation, you can't play on the lamb on this. Right, I, I cannot get away with on the lamb, so I just have to eat it. It's one of the annoying things uh, about Dying Launch. <laughs> yeah. But like, I I still wasn't really worried about taking any damage on Ezra, because like, uh, you know, four out of ten looking pretty good right yep and there's uh, nothing really left to, on the board to threaten Ezra anymore right and like if Vader's gonna come attack him like whatever I've got on the lamb yep so yeah but sometimes <clears throat> it can be scary especially when Ezra is like relying is, is damaged and was like trying to recover it can get scary there but you, your Ezra was full health most, almost yeah yeah so shuffling the officers around. Um. Or did Vader already activate? No, Vader has not gone yet. And so I think he's actually got the other officer and Vader left. Okay, so and he I've moved. Got... He moved Vader with that officer. Yeah, yeah. And so I think I've got Chopper and Zeb maybe left. Uh and he runs new orders in his deck, um, so I'm wondering if, like, if he could have set up a new orders with Vader, that would actually be something that could swing the game back. In his yeah, I mean favor. that would be pretty nice. I don't, I don't think he was able to get that off though. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, so I think I'm just being funny with Chopper here, so I can move three Ram Vader away from from Kanan. Uh, got some more damage on Vader. Uh, that was a good ram. And then uh, move move back with Chopper just to get the point. Uh, I've killed like two. Because I didn't I didn't want him to like if he had like pummel or something right. Yeah. Like uh, I just don't want him to have an easy kill if I can avoid it. And actually, this this prevents a new orders if if he had that. Yeah, I think but that might have. I, I I don't think I was thinking about that though. I don't think you were, uh, but I think he was, and I'm sure it was. He was probably frustrated because I think that's what he was trying to set up there. 
Was but he hadn't gone with Vader, right? But he so. could have done like he could have gone with Vader. Well, maybe he could do it now because he could. Have, yeah, he could if he still had the officer. He could do it now. I think he could have done a force uh, choke plus an attack. But he does have face to face here, so he's still gonna get his. He, yeah, he still gets the attack plus the choke. Yeah, and I I think he kills Kanan with just the attack. Yeah, because he's got seven surge and a surge, so. That's seven exactly going into Kanan. Yeah, that's a kill. Yeah, yeah. So he killed Kanan with the attack and was able to get the choke on Ezra, which is is pretty good. So that puts Ezra up to to six. Yep. Which is starting to get a little dangerous. Yep. Because now he can do an end around choke to get him to eight, right? And then he's Ezra's in choke right. range without being able to play on the lamb. Right. But I can I can still run away with Ezra. Uh, at the start of the round. That's though. true. Uh, so here, uh, looks like I'm going with Zeb, and I think uh, this is where I had urgency, maybe. Yeah. To uh, to go for those officers. Yeah. Which now, if he's got the new orders in his hand here, and I kill the officer that hasn't gone yet, that that, that must be really frustrating that, for him. That must have been it. That must have been because he still has that officer left to go. So you probably killed uh -huh. it. The one, yeah, you killed the one uh, that had uh, activated. Maybe yet. no, I, maybe he didn't. It looks like I just drew some cards. So no. I think I, that must have been the last activation for the round. Then actually, oh, I yeah, thought... that must have been the last activation. Oh, okay, that's for some reason I thought Zeb had done urgency as the last activation of the round. No, I think I no, I, I must do that later. Okay, uh, but yeah, I left him there because I was like, well, I'll just get the point because I was I was starting to look like we're probably gonna run out of time here because I can't kill Vader. So I'll just play it safe and get some points. Because mm -hmm. uh, I figure even if he kills Ezra and Chopper, that's like 10 for him. But if I get a couple more points, then like I'll still be... It'll be pretty close, actually. But uh, Yeah, and if you move Zeb up there, you're just kind of giving him more chances to score points. Yeah, like I don't really want you know him to just insta-kill Zeb or anything. Okay, so here he goes for the attack on Chopper, which is kind of a guaranteed kill. Yeah, I was kind of expecting him to just force choke Ezra here at the end of the round. Because he would have had uh, initiative going into round four. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that one kind of surprised me. Um... But it does get a figure off the board, which you want against Spectre. So now he's killed three. Three Spectres, but you still have three really big ones. Big hitters left. Yeah. Uh, so I think... But he is getting initiative going into the next round. Or no, are uh, we on... I think so. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I think I was doing heroic effort there is what, what was going on. Yeah, here yeah, we go. Yeah, so he gets initiative. Okay. Uh, and then I can run Ezra away for my start round. But even if you had run away, so let's see, one, two, three, four, like, I mean. But here, so I, I move him four away. I really thought about running around in the corner. Into the deployment like in zone. In his deployment zone. Yeah. But I was like, man, if he's got if he just moves over there and has like parting blow or something, like I might just die to that. I so I was really hoping to be able to just go with him and get away. Mm. Uh like really far away. The odd thing though is that that whole section of the map, there's nothing nowhere that Ezra can really hide from a force choke. Yeah, there's not any great places to go. Uh so he went with an officer first? Is that what happened? It looks like it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so here... No, knowing, you know, what what's going to happen next, I probably should have just gone with Ezra here and attacked an officer. Because hmm. uh, even if I don't kill him, I can probably recover. And then I, I've got on the lamb still, right? Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, and yeah, you know, at Instead this, I, at this yeah, point... Instead of that, I go with Sabine. Like, I was saying it was kind of odd to go for Chopper, but at this point, since you ran Ezra away, 
Vader just force chokes Ezra, and then he can do an end around force choke for the kill. Since you're, if you're not going to recover. Right. right. And so at this point, I just threw a grenade with Sabine because I was like, eh, whatever, nothing. I think I even did zero there. Uh, but I was like, well, if I even if he kills Ezra, you know, I'll grab a couple points from the, the doodads and I'll be good. And so here, he, here is, is how he kills Ezra. <laughs> So, oh, he, that's uh, right. Force surge. He, he does force choke into force surge. That's what it was. Which is enough to kill Ezra. And I'm like, dad got it. I really <laughs> should have just gone. Should have gone with Ezra and attacked the stupid officer. So it was totally correct for him to go after Chopper that, then, knowing he had the force surge to finish Ezra with a single force choke. So that really explains it. But now he's got to eat a dying lunge. Yeah, not, not that that really matters, though, right? Because, like. Again, I'm not killing Vader here. Uh, but he could have been... So instead of doing a force surge, he could have just waited and used the end of round choke and been out of range. Yeah, if, if he had end of round choked Ezra, he might have even been close enough to just run over there first activation and kill Ezra with another choke. Um, but that would have put him... I probably would have ran away into the deployment zone at that point. So that would have put him really far away from any kind of business. That's true. Uh, yeah, you could have double moved into that blocking terrain. Uh, so that makes sense. So yeah, here here's where I go with Zeb. And I'm like, well, I'll just go punch some officers then, I guess. Yeah, because he's tied up uh, the score here. So you, you just have to kind of score some more victory points yeah. and, and lock up the game. Yeah, so I want to... I want to just get rid of one of these officers and also make sure he can't get a point from standing next to this thing. Uh, yeah, and of course... So I think I... Of course. No dodge, so he's dead. Yeah, those officers will die to any any Zeb attack if they don't dodge. Yeah, I mean, Zeb, Zeb pretty much just punches them to death real quick. Yep. Uh, and he, so... Uh, then he just has the one officer left. And that, that puts me up enough that I can pretty much just run away with uh, with Zeb and run out. It, it's Time's almost up at this point. Yep. So. And he'd have to kill another Spectre to win. Yeah, and they both have full health. So. Yep. And this is the funny part where Zeb, you know, you double, I think you double moved and got an attack, and now it's top around attack and double move. <laughs> Yeah, so I try to just punch this officer. Uh, and I think he can actually... Oh, he must... Yeah, he must have got a blank. Uh, yeah, I think or so. Or an evade or something. So he's dead. And then I'm like, well, I'll just run away at this point. Uh, yep, because Vader's so out of position, again, from trying to having to chase down Ezra. Yeah, I mean, he's basically going to have to double move to, like get a chance to force choke next round, right? Yep, uh, and there's the handshake. And and so he, he resigned there. Uh, I mean, we were pretty much out of time at this point as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah it, was, it was a pretty entertaining game. Yeah, that was a good game. A lot of posturing. Might have been too conservative for Arbidas, but I think that's how he yeah, got it's, as it's far as it's really hard game. to say against Spectre whether you should go in or not. Yeah, the timing is always difficult to gauge. Like, when is the right time to move move on them? Yeah. Well, thank you, thanks, Daniel, for uh, coming in and talking about this awesome game. And uh, yeah, it was good. It was go good to have you on. Yep. Thanks. Bye. Bye.